Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. As you guys can see up on the screen today, I want to talk a little bit about SoFi Technologies. Once again, this is ticker symbol SOFI or SoFi as it's most commonly known. They got the ticker symbol, same as the company, really simple, really easy, really straightforward. Um, but today was not necessarily a great day for SoFi. Obviously, they were down 7.4% on the day. Now, um, that's not great news. No one really likes to see that. But uh, on the bright side, uh, we can take a look at the you know broader market and see that SoFi was not alone. Stocks were down everywhere. We see the Dow Jones down 1.3%. We see the S&P down 1.89%. NASDAQ down 2.7%, Russell down 1.78%. You know, there was blood in the market all over the place. This was not just SoFi. Now, yes, SoFi was maybe down more than uh, these indices, you know, percentage wise, but that's what you get when you have a more volatile, more speculative, more kind of high risk stock like SoFi. Yes, it's, it's higher risk, but it's also higher reward. Um, and, you know, it's more volatile on the downside, but it's also more volatile on the upside as well. You know, we saw a 13% update here. We saw a 9.4% update here. Um, and we've seen a lot of these big down days, 8% down day, 5.56% down day, you know, 4.26% update. It seems like SoFi and all these other stocks, you know, all these fintech, speculative stocks, whatever retail stocks are outperforming the S&P or outperforming the NASDAQ up and down each day. You know, they're just kind of like a um, highly leveraged version of these indices almost just in the, in the way that they're acting, which is not shocking to a lot of people. You know, this is generally how the market acts. Um, you know, the S&P is going to be your more consistent, you know, less volatile stuff over the time. And, you, you know, your individual stocks are going to have a little bit more volatility, a little bit crazier stuff. Um, but even though today was a very, very bad day for SoFi, you know, we opened up massively down. We kind of started to bounce back, then just continue to sell off the rest of the day. I wanted to go over still some news uh, for SoFi around the market, and uh, I wanted to compare them. Obviously, they just recently were approved for their bank charter, so I wanted to compare them to another, um, you know, kind of fintech up and coming company like this uh, and see what's happened to other companies previously when they have got their bank charter. You know, what is what has it done to revenues? What has it done to stock price? What is it done to share price? What can, you know, we maybe think is in store for SoFi in the next coming quarters, in the next coming years, now that they have been able to successfully get approved for this bank charter. Um, and I think, you know, people will be excited about that. And I think that will be kind of some good news on a dark day. So definitely drop a like if you guys do enjoy this video. I would appreciate that a ton. Subscribe, save today and all my latest content and consider checking out the first link in the description below uh, for the Patreon for this channel. It's an easy, awesome way to help support my channel and my content. Every single dollar of the Patreon goes into the YouTube portfolio that we track weekly here on this account and grow in a small portfolio over time uh, and showing you guys how easy and fun it can be. With that being said, let's get right into this. So again, SoFi down 7.4% today. Um, you know, we're down 11.42% on the year. Um, I, I don't know if we've ever been green on the year. I wanted to say we got green on the year. Yeah, we did get green on the year for a little tiny bit, um, but that has turned around. We're back to red on the year. We're down 11% on the year. Um, but again, the market's flipped in a big way the last couple of days. Um, you know, Big tech kind of starting to take a beating, kind of starting to hurt. Obviously, Netflix earnings yesterday didn't help anything out um, in terms of scaring people. Also, there's interest rate hikes and uh, you know inflation concerns and, and all this other stuff going on. But some good news. We have this article from The Motley Fool. Three beaten down fintech stocks to buy on sale right now. And yes, SoFi made the list. SoFi technology stock has been hammered, even though the company uh, added over a million new customers last year. So, hey, this is the Motley Fool, um, you know, trying to tell people about SoFi, trying to get people to buy SoFi, trying to tell them how awesome and exciting uh, not only of a company it is, but as a, uh, you know, buying opportunity it is, as this stock is now a little bit beat down, as the stock might be a little bit on sale right now, especially with some recent good news of, you know, stuff like the bank charter coming out, stuff like um, potentially increased revenue and, and getting closer and closer to profitability in the future. All this exciting, exciting stuff. I thought this was really, really cool. Obviously, the more good publicity for, um, you know, the stock is going to be a good thing. So uh, it was cool that the Molly Fool was talking about them, you know, even on, um, you know, not a great day for the stock individually. Um, we also had this post on the subreddit talking about for those who want to know about uh, more about SoFi Hong Kong, here it is. 
Um, they talk about the features, mainly three features that you can navigate in the app, direct invest, auto invest, and social tab, and nothing else. Um, so it's kind of, you know, bare bones, kind of simple. Direct invest is a place where you trade. Ultra simple line chart, 15 minutes delayed stock quote. Buying or selling takes a minute or two to update correctly in the portfolio. Uh, limit order is up to 14 days. Stop order, but no trailing stop, no options. Stock info has PE, market cap, et cetera. Basic Apple stock app like stuff. Fractional share in big cap stocks. Um, you have the auto invest, which is five preset selections for each risk type tolerance um, based on your answer those uh, to the questions uh, here is ETFs. It will uh, select for you between VTI, VWO, VEA, BND, IAU, TIP, USHY, and USD Cash. You cannot auto invest in aggressive selection uh, if your profile answers were moderately conservative, but it does work the other way around. From my test, only from this person's test, at least the only conservative uh, exclude. Uh, ec equities um it only held iau tip bnd ushy usd um other profile just a matter of allocation uh it works by auto reallocating your asset between weeks between these etfs but it's uh up to them to decide the proportion so you know they have they have some ways that you can directly invest in you know individual stocks or etfs or whatever you want to do then they have you know kind of an auto more kind of brainless way to invest which you know maybe is good for some people and then they have the social tab uh, where you can follow your friends or anyone and see how they trade uh, what do they have in their pro uh, portfolio and the leaderboard is re related to your assets level which is kind of interesting as well um something that this person likes about the hong kong app obviously this is just kind of a comparison because a lot of people have been interested about sofi hong kong because it's way different than like the north american version or the united states version of sofi um and people are wondering you know obviously they can't see the sofi hong kong version people are wondering like yeah what's better what's different what's worse uh market order usually picks the highest price they've ever seen uh you know that's a little bit of an issue uh gtd only 14 instead of 90 i got on the other app no trailing stop percentage no individual stock recurring purchases um these are things they don't like um deposit takes longer time and effort compared to competitors um no sip in us stock auto invest has alloc has no allocation option only two banks can work with auto invest auto invest must be hkd um deposit from bank monthly but can't deduct right from the app account um can't cancel cast instruction i typoed uh no two-factor login um and then as far as the positives they keep improving they only uh hkd 30 around uh four dollars monthly fee no other fees simple interface uh email customer service was great and prompt dark mode hey that's awesome and no extended hours at all um which they say is a good thing you know some people would say it's a bad thing but they're you know kind of interesting to see what sofi hong kong is like um maybe some potential you know features user interface things that may come over to the united states version maybe some things for the united states version that'll end up in the hong kong version you know hopefully use these two assets and these two different um you know kind of systems to to build off of each other and hopefully it'll be a good thing but uh it's kind of weird and annoying that uh, there are so different i'm sure people are frustrated you know if you have one of them and you want features from the other uh kind of weird or annoying that hey they have that why don't i have that or why can't i have that or whatever so kind of interesting um, the news did come out. Uh, I know somebody posted this YouTube video on the SoFi stock subreddit of the 1% checking ad is going to be at the Super Bowl, and they think that this could be a game changer. Right now, 100 million people, according to them, are getting zero on their checking account, and we'll see this. Most average Americans do not invest and have a few thousand in their account. You know, getting an extra 1% per year would be very, very exciting. This is a big thing that SoFi, um, you know, is claiming they're going to be doing, uh, and, you know, it could be very, very exciting. It is something that maybe, you know, 1% is not crazy. It's not anything huge. I don't think it's anything that, um, you know... I could see a lot of people being excited about it. You know, 1% is better than zero or 0.0001% or whatever the heck, uh, you know, people are getting at this time. Um, is it enough for people to want to switch? Because obviously people are lazy. I don't know. Um, but it should make for a good ad and a ton of people are going to see it. You know, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, but as far as the comparisons, I want to talk about Lending Club a little bit. They're another, you know, company in stock that is being compared to SoFi a lot. Uh, and what is very, very interesting is Lending Club got this decision letter um, about Lending Club from the OCC about their bank charter. You know, they went through an acquisition um, very, very similar to what SoFi has done um with uh you know the bank they acquired to you know get into this bank charter and all that stuff this happened december 30th of 2020 um and what has the lending club stock done in that time we go to december 
30th, uh, December 31st of 2020, we were at $10.56. From $10.56, um, over the next 10 months, the stock went up 335%. You know, this was at a time during a you know, keep in mind, this was at a time of a very, very bullish market. A lot of speculative fintech, you know, a lot of these stocks were flying very, very high. We saw very, very similar things with SoFi. But just understanding that, again, it went up 335% in the next 10 months. Yes, from there, it did crash 54%. But still, from where we were where we're at, December 30th of 2020 to where we're at today, it's still up 98% um, over the course of about 13 months. Um, if we go to Qualtrim to actually look at, you know, some of the statistics and stuff for the company, here we have uh, Lending Club's revenue pulled up. Uh, again, this was 1231 of 20. This was the quarter before um, they were approved for this bank charter. Um I don't actually believe the deal ended up going through until February. Um, you can't see this stuff. I don't believe the deal actually ended up going through until February. So, you know, it, it does take some kind of time. But, um, you know, you can see that uh, they were making around $76 million in the quarter before they got their bank charter approval. And then the revenues just started climbing. 131, uh, 226, 263 in all the quarters since they have been, uh, you know, approved for this bank charter. We, we know the bank charter helps with revenue. It helps lowering costs. It helps with, um, you know, generating profit. Um, you can also see net income. Uh, again, here we were at where they were losing $26.6 million. Yes, it went down. Um, but then this thing uh, has only gotten better and better. They've gotten into profitability. They're now making a net income. Same thing with the e EBITDA. Um, you know, we see they're now in the, the positives. They are doing well. Um, and, and it just seems like, you know, ever since they got their bank charter, things have been going very, very well for Lending Club. And you know, it doesn't mean the exact same things are going to happen for SoFi or it's going to play out the exact same or whatever, but it does kind of give you an idea of at least what another company's experience was and what the options and possibilities are for SoFi stock maybe in the future. Uh, not even just SoFi stock, but SoFi as a company as well. So I just want to get, you know, some of that data out to you guys, but that is pretty much it for this video today. Definitely drop a like if you did enjoy it. I would appreciate that so, so much. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about SOFI. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe, stay up to date, and all my latest content. Hopefully catch you guys in the next one, but until then, peace.